news. This is news you can trust. You're listening to the Babylon Bee. Here are your infallible hosts, Kyle Mann and Ethan Nicole. Reporting from their thrones built out of Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Mm. Man, this is a delicious throne. Mm. Oh, hello. Uh, we didn't see you there. We were just eating our, our Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A thrones. thrones. We have to have the servants come in and replenish the Chick-fil-A throne. Yes. Servant. That we, that we sit in. Uh, we're Give clothed. Me- <laughs> Give closed. me Chick-fil-A sauce, please. <laughs> More Chick-fil-A sauce. I have a spicy Chick-fil-A throne, and it's giving me a weird rash. So what's your Chick-fil-A order, Ethan? It's spicy Chick-fil-A sandwich, like two of them. And uh, fries? You get the waffle fries? Yeah, I get the fries. Just I act like a victim, like, oh, I guess you're going to throw these in. I guess I have to eat those. I do the same thing. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a chicken strip man. I do like those too. Like like when we went recently to Chick Fil A, yeah. you asked me for chicken strips, and then you're like, "Oh no no," because I ordered on my phone, Some and you're more. like, "Oh no no," the meal. I'm like, "Oh," so I added the meal, but I kept the chicken strips that I already added for oops. you. And I'm like, oops. Uh, "Oops," so then I ate those extra. Hmm. Oh well, I guess we've got to eat these extra chicken strips. Darn it! Sad. Did Man. you see? Did you see that story? I saw it on Discern News, which is Adam's news. Discern. Do you- <laughs> is that how you say that? Dis- discern. I thought it was dis right now. Dis right now. Dis right now. It's kind of uh, like now this, but dis right now. There was a story of some Chick Fil A guy that crawled into the manhole to to get somebody's keys out, like like a customer <laughs> dropped keys down a sewer manhole, and Chick Fil A and Chick-fil-A the employees the like leaping down into the manhole to save the keys. I find it so very problematic amazing. that we're using the term manhole still. It's a non-gender conforming mm-hmm. person hole. The them hole. <laughs> that was the. <laughs> I can't remember what they call. I think they call them maintenance holes in maintenance Berkeley. Holes. That was the, which is just so There's fun. nothing good you can add a hole to. <laughs> I mean, I admit manhole is not a great name, but the them hole. Yeah, we, yeah, it's just a hole for a human to go down. The human hole, the whole person hole, the person hole. Anyway, but, <laughs> we got a great show for you today, yeah, people. We, we got comedian Kellen Erskine coming in today. Awesome. I don't know how many people know about him, and I, and I have to admit, I'm bringing him on. Because I'm a huge fan, for people that are huge fans, I think you're going to be excited to hear. But also, I really, I think that our audience is going to love him because he's like a clean comedian. He's a, he's a Latter-day Saint. Yeah. They don't like to be called Mormons anymore. Yeah, you can't call them Mormons. We'll ask him about that. It seems like a lot of syllables to force people to use, though. Yeah. La- hey, Laddie. Maybe Laddie or Ladder or Sainty. Can you just like shorten it up? Saint, yeah, it's like uh, saints who were previously known as Mormons. It's like the Prince. Mary <laughs> the Latter Day Saints, saints who, who were previously, previously were known as Mormons <laughs> until That's recently. Shorter. We're known as Mormons. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have him on. I've seen some of his stuff on the Dry Bar comedy. Yeah, he's a Dry Bar superstar. Stuff. I found him because I was just randomly. I, well, I'll t- I'll tell that when he comes on. I'll yeah. tell him so he can blush. He's coming straight here from the temple in Salt Lake yeah. City. And, yeah, straight on. But not actually. Riding an elephant. And usually we record the interviews like at a different time and then we pretend like the person just walked in. But this time we're actually yeah, trying it's to actually time happening. it. We're this trying time. to time it where he'll walk in and we'll say, oh, hello there. Oh, Why there, don't you say that? There he is. So actually we need to get him a chair. Nobody cares about this behind the scenes stuff. Yes, they do. They love it. You know who loves they it? love it. You know who loves it? <laughs> is that Frank Fleming? Hey, Frank. Is that Frank chuckling in the background? <laughs> hey, our best writer. Speaking of Frank, Frank has a book out. Yes, he does. And he's not paying for this or anything, but we yeah, decided we, just, we would play a clip yeah. from the audio book because it's really funny. Yeah, his book, Hellbender. His book, Hellbender, and he just put out the audible version. So let's play a clip from Hellbender. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> That is not Hellbender. (laughs) Excellent work. Once again, Hellbender. Sirens were going off, and Doug could see that something big was happening out the windshield. He went forward for a better look, and could see a giant lizard creature fighting a giant robot. What's going on? Locke's forces are attacking the city, Bryce explained. Doug watched the robot punch the lizard. So are we rooting for the robot or the lizard? I don't really follow politics. Bryce shrugged. 
I don't like to take sides. And there you have it. <laughs> it reminded me of The Simpsons, and I'm sure that you know Frank's always inspired by The Simpsons, where, yes. they, where they all the aliens come down, and it's don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. You know, as <laughs> <like, laughs> all humanity is enslaved. I don't, yeah. It's almost like there's a wider point to his satirical it's, work. Yeah, there. It's as if he's getting something deeper. It's really funny. I, I haven't finished it, but uh, yeah, it's a really the funny. The bits I read are just. He really, does these really because this is his book where he completely kind of went off the rails and just did whatever he'd want to do and he self-published it. He has this whole side thing where there's a, a person in training. I think it's a little girl or like a young girl being trained by this uh, mafia guy, like how to be a mobster guy. And she keeps getting it totally wrong. There's all these funny little side stories. Anyway, read it. Read Hillbender. You Hillbender. can get it. You can get the copy, hard copy or the Kindle on Amazon. And then he's got his. New Audible audio version out for those of you that like to listen to stuff, which should be all of you because you're listening to stuff. And you know a free advertisement's good because it's free. Because we're actually promoting it because we like it. (laughs) Not that we don't like other stuff we promote. That's true. Careful. careful. uh, All right. So with uh, that, should we jump into our stories of the week? Let's go. Every week there are stories. These are some of them. Kanye West joins the Newsboys. Oh yeah, Newsboys. <laughs> that's not. I don't know. That's DC Talk. Do I know? And I'm trying to think of. I never. And all the milk has turned, or toast has burned, and all the milk has turned, and Captain Crunch is waving is farewell. They sing about cereal. Yeah, it's, they don't serve breakfast in hell. They yeah, I don't, don't know that one. What was the really, really popular hell? one? Um, like the CCM. Take me to your leader. Oh yeah, I remember that name. Shine was that? That was them, right? Hmm. Newsman. Anyway, sorry. Shine. I'm sure everybody Make else. I wonder is what you got. <laughs> Make I wish that they were not. Um, and then that God's not dead. Yeah. Oh, that's them. Oh yeah, because they got with Michael. They Tate. got Michael Tate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm really alive. So like, I should do a impersonation since you've been yeah. doing them. <laughs> <laughs> Living on the ends, I'm roaring like a lion. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> so newsboys, I feel like they've always been around. They're just this constant in Christian culture. Yeah. They were like early nineties. I mean, they were I was never pretty... into them, so I feel like I I don't know what to say. The only thing I have on newsboys, and I'm afraid to get this out there, is that I heard from one guy. So this sounds like a, a, a guy that used to transport artists, and I don't know if this is true. And this is a long time ago. Maybe it was in their high. Maybe they're having a bad day. This guy that used to transport Christian artists to their concerts, and he said that was like the one standout group that he said like he said they weren't very nice to him. You know, we when we posted this article, a few people said that in the comments. Oh, really? So it's yeah. already out there. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared. I don't want newsboys. And I'm sure Michael Tate's nice. And I'm sure this Kanye guy is nice. Well, and there, it, the 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 lineup kept changing too because there was the original newsboys with Peter Furler, and then they started mm-hmm. getting you know, rotating in different guys. So it might have been different people. I don't know who's a jerk and who's yeah. Who was the jerk? We don't know. I'm but sure I'm sure there's nice guys in there. I'm sure a lot of CCM artists are like just in CCM for the. Yeah, I was wondering if there's somebody thing. that's that duplicitous that they completely fake their faith just to get. Yeah, I don't know if it's fake. Yeah. So much as it is just they're just normal dudes, and then now they're all of a sudden famous. Yeah, I think yeah. I think a lot of people. You're like 19 or 18, and you're this on fire little Christian, but like you haven't really thought through your faith, and a lot of people go through their doubts in that phase. Can you right. imagine getting suddenly skyrocketing to fame right. as a musician and this like worship leader, Christian, you know, prophet of music? Yeah. <laughs> and if you if you decide to say anything like, you know what, I kind of doubt or I'm not totally sure. Or it's like, uh, oh, OK, there goes my entire career. Yeah. Th- and that's the bigger problem, I think, is that we elevate these people. Yeah. You know, when it's like we should be talking about how they're jerks in hotel rooms yeah. and cars. The only one we all should, the time. The only one we should elevate is G.K. Chesterton. That's right. Yes, he should be. They're trying to make him a saint, but it got denied. Sad. Sad. Well, you know, uh, Kanye West, though. So this is based on yeah. the true deal that he was like, he's like holding church services and worship services and. Yeah. Legit preaching. It's weird. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where I'm hopeful. Yeah. But it's like at the same time, people jump on these celebrity bandwagons and then all of a sudden, you know, a year or two later, it's like, eh. Yeah. They're ready to have him be like the like preaching. <laughs> like, wait, let's ca- let's let Kanye preach. Yeah. But it is funny that people are like, yeah, he, he's faking it. You know, there's no way God would save him. And it's like, well, <laughs> he saved you. Yeah. You punk. He saved a lot of uh, messed up people. But he had like a legit, he had a preacher from like the Master's University, John MacArthur, or Master's Seminary, John MacArthur's. That's where you went, place. right? Yeah. Wow. So he's legit. 
So he could have had you if you had gone through and finished if, your... If I'd finished. <laughs> that could have been you up there yeah. instead of here. So I just have to write jokes. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you're going to end up, kids, if you don't finish college. Is it bad that I'm not sure if I've ever heard a Kanye West song? Uh, yeah, the only one I know of is the... Because uh, everybody says he's so... He's huge, apparently. How could you be so heartless? You remember that one? Uh-uh. That was like, I don't know, 10 years ago. You'd be so heartless. Yeah, all like I, I'm sure, I just listen to my old-timey jazz and bluegrass. All right, well, that's true. You don't know any <laughs> modern stuff. Sometimes these famous guys, I don't know them at all. Yeah. And then someone is like, oh, here's his most famous song. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard that. Like, yeah, I've, yeah, heard, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that at Walmart. But I think it's stuff. Yeah, Walmart. That's where you hear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's where all the kids listen to music these that's days. That's where all the Kanye's bumping. <laughs> They're bumping the Kanye. <laughs> I think his stuff is pretty explicit, so I don't know how. Like, oh, really? I don't know. I don't listen to that cussing music. Yeah. Just bluegrass. Yeah. Next story. Media horrified by lack of violence at Joker screenings. It's very disappointing. You know, after they hyped it all up. <laughs> I know. They really got us believing that this is going to be like... Got all excited. Like the clown apocalypse. I had all my virtue signaling tweets ready to go. I had them all pre-drafted. <laughs> you know, NRA, the, the blood is on your hands from yeah. this Joker shooting. And then... Mm-hmm. Nothing happened. I was very sad. I always feel like a little dirty when we're joking about shooting. Even shootings, even though it's a shooting that hasn't happened, it's like a fantasy shooting that isn't even a fantasy shooting. Like, not a fantasy <laughs> shooting, but like a like an imaginary shooting. Even that, like I still feel bad. Imagine, I like Strong. the wrong fantasy shooting. That's pretty funny. That's yeah. like something that. That's what video games are. It's a fantasy shooting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I definitely felt like this. Uh, like everybody was, it's like when when there was the white the white nationalist rallies, they're hyping up, you know, and then ten people show up, you know, and they get all disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, how it is, you know. That was awesome. It's just like <laughs> I saw some meme someone did of the Pepe the Frog, and he's painted up like the Joker, and then the media is like poking him with a stick. Uh-huh. And it's like, come on, <laughs> come do on. the do the shooting, come <laughs> on. You know, it would have fit so well into the narrative. There was one article after Joker came out and they said uh, they were reporting on someone that was thrown out of the movie theater for smoking a cigarette. <laughs> it's like two people caught smoking and talking at Joker. <laughs> yeah, somebody pointed out that that would be like, this would not even make the national news if it wasn't the Joker movie. Yeah. Can you imagine that coming up would for make any the other local movie? news. Right? Yeah, would yeah. make the local <laughs> Someone was smoking the movie theater. Yeah, to me, like that was their, they got their... They got their their murder. That okay. was the murder. Well, it's, it's it was a slight point zero 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 one six percent murder because the person whoever sm- whoever breathed that in, you know, they died just a little because that secondhand smoke. Yeah, it's very gradual. Yeah. So when that when the other people in the theater die of uh, lung cancer in like fifty years, they'll yeah. be able to run the story on it. First death from Joker. So if you think about it, anybody who smokes around other people is. Like a very, it's a he's a, a very, very slow small portion of a of a mass shooter. Yeah, but if you add up like the point oh one percent they killed yeah. of all the people, they've probably killed like hundreds and hundreds of people. If you put all the smokers together in one room, it's like the the biggest collection of mass murderers. If we history. go down this road, we could justify just going out and arresting or ca- yeah. just shooting down anybody we see smoking or like people who die from stress, as like, if they are are murderers. If you die from stress, like your boss killed you. Yeah. Very slowly. It's true. So all the bosses, all the CEOs are murderers. It all leads back to Joker somehow. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> frankly, it's all Joker's fault. It's weird how they turned on Joker so much. Like I remember there is, everybody's so excited about it and oh, it's so artistic and it's like a daring. Yeah. I don't know. Superhero movie. I don't know why suddenly, that was. I think it was because the, the director, I think oh, it wasn't he, in the director say something about how woke culture Oh, That's one reason yeah, he, he yeah. left. Uh, am I he getting my do, movies he, mixed up? No, I think you're right. He said he can't do comedy anymore yeah, because of comedy. PC culture. And they get real. They really don't like when you say that. So yeah. then they then they cancel you. <laughs> <laughs> so then they try to find something. So then suddenly it's like the Joker yeah. movie is going to make everybody murder people. Have you seen Joker yet? No, I don't have like no interest in seeing it. Well, is it because you don't like superhero movies, or is it just the particular one? Uh, generally don't like superhero movies. I mean, I'm just kind of bored by them. But there's every once in a while is one I'm interested in seeing. Um, and then this one, it just looks, it just looks dark and I don't know. I'm just not into these like, so, um, movies like that. Adam, Adam Ford Mm -hmm. does not like superhero movies, hates them. Mm -hmm. Love the Dark Knight trilogy though. 
Yeah, Dark Knight was pretty good. And I didn't like the Dark Knight trilogy that much. Okay. And I love superhero movies. And he says Joker is a masterpiece, hmm. which makes me think I'm not going to like it. <laughs> because I, well, I think it's one of those movies that just happens to be set in the Batman universe. Mm-hmm. But it's like it didn't necessarily need to be Joker. It could have just been a... Yeah, this makes me wonder if they just had psycho some guy. script about some psycho guy and they're like, hey, throw the Joker yeah. on this. Well, why don't we paint his face like a clown? Perfect. Yeah. You know, ship it. Ship it. So Print I know. It. Anyway, Joker. Joker. Be careful. Watch out because we don't know what's happened. Oh, and by the way, yeah, yeah. we're recording this early in the week. So if someone gets shot at a Joker screening, we don't think it's funny. Then I would like to just cancel everything that Ethan just said. Mm-hmm. And Kyle. Media warns excessive forgiveness. Can I try that again? <laughs> Instead of five giveness or three giveness, it's four <laughs> giveness. This, you know what? This was such big forgiveness that we're referring to it could be five giveness. Five. It was big. Media warns excessive forgiveness could set back outrage narrative hundreds of years. So this is referring to uh, uh, the Botham Jean and Amber Geiger trial. Yeah, this is and, the story uh, where... Uh, Brant Jean went over... His brother, the victim's brother, went over and hugged the police officer who shot his brother. Mm-hmm. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. Yeah, she's the one who went into the dark apartment thinking it was hers. And then suddenly she thought there was some guy in her apartment laying on her couch eating ice cream or something and... I, gotta I think say, they were in the dark and she shot him. I don't know what's going on. I got to say, I felt, I was very like convicted, personally convicted and like had to repent when I saw this image of the guy hugging. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know anybody who didn't, cr- well, that's the weird thing. I know Everybody I know cried when they watched this yeah. amazing video of him forgiving her right. and asking the judge if he can hug her. Yeah. But what we're talking about here is there's other other response but sorry yeah I'm not well sure anyway I was, I was just saying like I, I i felt like i was all upset at the police officer and i'm like oh how police officers think they can just kick down the door and shoot somebody and ah you know mm-hmm. she got justice you know and i'm like mm. ah and then it's like oh the brother is like forgiving her and mm-hmm. i am not like mm-hmm. what <laughs> what kind of a what kind of a witness is that for him you know it's like and all the people that saw that example of christian forgiveness i thought it was amazing yeah hugged her for like a full minute so what this article is referring to, though, of course, is that there were some people that were upset, actually upset at the forgiveness, mm-hmm. which is, I didn't think this was real. Like, I thought, oh, okay, there's just probably a couple of fringe people that were upset for some reason. But, like, this was actually a fairly widespread response, at least on, you know, Twitter and some of the woke websites like Vice and stuff. Or whatever. Yeah, there's two, I mean, there wasn't two sides to it, but there was kind of, one that I really saw was that people felt like they were so mad that she didn't, that she only got 10 years and... You know, so they and then they felt like this kind of like piled on to that, that he hugged her too and forgave her. Hmm. Um, and then there was this whole other idea that that he, well, with this guy, uh, Bishop Talbert Swan, who I'd never heard of till this tweet. Uh, he he just tweeted the uh, the story showing him, uh, showing Brandt hugging Amber and he said post-traumatic slavery syndrome. syndrome. And uh, it's just so bizarre to think that that's, <clears throat> you know that that uh that Brant is in some weird mental state where he's doing the wrong thing or something. I just yeah, for forgiving. Yeah, and there was this there was this fear that like white people were um trying to extrapolate this like oh you're forgiven for all your sins by yeah. black people or you're forgiven for all your racism that all black people should hugged. do this or that yeah I saw people well, posting that like oh you. You love this because you think that black people, uh, what was it? Some response I got from somebody that I, that I don't think, that I think all black people, oh, that, that we should be okay with black people being killed or something like that. It was so bizarre. There's this weird attitude about it and everybody has to take it out to this thing. Like, like it wasn't between Amber Geiger and Botham Jean. It was between blacks and whites. Right. And then also this hug was between blacks and whites. So it has to be, we all own it and we all, it's, we're all part of it. And what I appreciated about this moment with Brant Jean was it didn't seem racial. It was like human to human. He was being human and he was saying, you know, I'm, I, and, it, and I assume when, whenever I see like these light sentences happen, people always go to race. I mean, I assume a lot of the time, you know, we weren't there for the whole court thing we don't know you know and maybe they made a good case that this was a purely accidental shooting i don't know i wasn't there but um if he was convinced of that and he feels bad that she's going to prison or whatever uh it makes sense i mean it's 
I don't know. This is like deeper stuff from <laughs> getting to on a Monday morning. <laughs> it's not Monday. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's actually Wednesday. I know it feels but, like um, Monday to me. <laughs> I don't remember where I was going with that. Yeah, but. no, I, I get what you're saying. And, and yeah, and it's not necessarily that he was saying, well, it's okay what you did. That that was the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. There was a huge burden. Like his, his his brother's dead, you know, and, and he's saying, he's not saying it's okay what you did. He's saying, I forgive you. And it's like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy who was actually harmed by, like most of us weren't actually harmed by this. You know, we yeah. just saw it from a distance and we, you know, we said, oh, right. we, we took sides or whatever, but he was and actually it's not ours harmed. to forgive it. So right. it drives me crazy when people act like they can forgive on behalf of other people. Sure. You know, we forgive you for the murder of a hundred people and we weren't there. <laughs> Only Jesus can yeah. do that. But I do think as Christians, we think a lot more about what forgiveness actually means. It's just a topic that we bring up a lot. And so I think there's a weird disconnect with this topic between just kind of the secular response to it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because there's just, no, I don't think there's anything in most of our minds that says that we expect someone else to do it or that it's... Right. And so, you know, yeah, that, that was kind of what people... Or that she's excused. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're excused. Well, that's kind of what people were assuming was like, okay, so you're saying that everybody, that you, you now expect forgiveness because yeah. of this. And I don't think anybody was saying that. Yeah. There was a there was an op-ed in the Washington Post I thought was pretty bad. <laughs> and and it, the, the headline was, White Christians do not cheapen the hug and message of forgiveness from Botham Jean's brother. And then in the article, it says, if white people expect all black people to extend forgiveness as quickly as Brant Jean did, then they understand neither black people nor black pain. Mm-hmm. And it was it, it was that that element of like trying to extrapolate this. Like yeah. you were saying, like seeing everything through this lens of, oh, this is a lens of race. This is a race mm-hmm. issue. When it was just, it was a guy forgiving someone and you're right. like, that, that harmed him deeply. And I thought that was, that was really powerful if you look at it through a Christian mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. And, and w- uh, when we had Kira on... Kira, I just blanked on her last name. Davis. Kira Davis on, uh, it was one of our, be- I think it was one of our best episodes. It's one of the ones we've gotten the most, I think it may be the one I've gotten the most good feedback about. Um, she talked about race on that and she made a great point about how we, we, we always get into this race stuff, race stuff, but at the end of the day, it's about sin nature and it's, it's all sin. We all just, we need forgiveness. Forgiveness is what we all need. And it's sin driving this whole uh, distraction. And, uh, I think this is kind of a reminder of that. Like when I saw Brant go for that hug, I was just, I didn't think of it as a, as a black guy and a white woman hugging. I just, to me, it was like, to me, it was humans. I don't know. Not that I couldn't see color. I'm not saying that, but why can't we be colorblind? (laughs) Michael W. Smith. All right. Well, uh, I think that's our story's do you hear footsteps outside the door? Oh, we, is we that have, Kellen we Erskine no, walking we, towards we, us? Do we have something else? We have to uh, extend it. We have to wait until he actually walks in the door. We do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I so was going to edit oh, it. Oh, look, here he comes. We'll pretend that he's oh, coming in hey, right now. Hey, Kellen. Hey. That was my impression. Very good. <laughs> Presenting an exclusive Babylon B interview. And he's here. Kellen Erskine has stepped into the building. That was good timing, Ethan. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, why don't you say hi, Kellen? Hi, that was a great, a great <laughs> intro. I do like it when people get my name right, though. Did I get it right? I, yeah, I have a, I have a really bad name for uh, entertainment. Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I've heard it before, so it helped. Well, I always know, like, if the host of a show doesn't ask me my, what my name is at least two or three times before he goes out, or she, <laughs> it's not gonna, like one time. So I was like, "What's your name?" I said, "Kellen Erskine." He's like, "All right," and he leaves. And I was like, "There's no way this is gonna <laughs> work out." He did his set, and he's like, "All right, welcome to the stage, Calvin Earthshine." <laughs> <laughs> or even just Erskine, like, Erskine, Erskine. Oh uh, yeah, it's spelled Erskine, but because my last name's Nicole, and people all the time as they're reading it, they think. He's a, his name can't really be Nicole, last name Nicole. That's weird. So then in their head, this is, they're saying in their head and then they go, Ethan Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> like they're so, trying to add like a little, little flourish so to it. Weird. Yeah. That you're, <laughs> like, because my, that was my first impression too. And I realized that like culturally we're just, we're at that, uh, at a weird place that I'd never considered before that like, you're a man. So your last name can't be a woman. <laughs> Meanwhile, most last names are men's name, but you never see a woman yeah. who's like, if her last name is like Stevens or Evans or yeah. Peterson, you never think, <laughs> oh, but she's a woman that shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, or uh, Kyle's very, last name. 
My, I have the manliest last name what, of all, which is, is man. Just man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, can't, you can't get much more toxically yeah, masculine yeah. than. <laughs> yeah, so funny. everyone in this family sounds like a superhero. Yeah. My wall and my wife is destiny. So she's destiny man, oh, which man. just sounds. That's awesome. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> we never got into this, but why didn't you, when you had kids, like name them all awesome stuff? We almost did a middle name Spider. Okay. Oh, for for our first, but then we did Middle name is chicken knitting, though. Yeah. It's we chickened out. A bit. Yeah. You could have disguised it like yeah. you could have had like Bartholomew, and for short, it's yeah. Bat. Right. Um, <laughs> there you go. Bartholomew. Yeah, we thought about doing stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Or you make the funny, the, the middle name funny to kind of like, you know, mm. Kyle is a, you could do it, is a, Kyle is a man. <laughs> that kind of that's rough. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a legit stand up comedian here. You gotta be you gotta up your game, oh, Kyle. Shoot. My son, my my newest son, the latest one is the newest, named, yeah. the newest and most improved <laughs> model. We named him uh, Gibson, and his middle name is Gray Gibson Gray, Whoa, and that right a, there to me yeah. sounds so cool. Very but superhero. Like, yeah. I'm already he's only two. I'm Alter already ego. telling him now, like if you're gonna become like a novelist or uh, yeah. like an actor, just drop Erskine because yeah. Gibson Gray <laughs> sounds so good. Like I don't care about the last name. It's so <laughs> funny, like watching stuff like Game of Thrones where. Um, through Vid Angel. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yes. Wait a minute. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Mike, for, thank you for clarifying. I almost said Mike Scratch. <laughs> Record Scratch. And for our homeschoolers, Game of Thrones is a. Uh, <laughs> it's not a game. Secular television show. <laughs> Highly secular. <laughs> but the uh, the what and not just in that show, but in general, like what last names have meant. Like you know, you're mm -hmm. you're whatever it is. You know. Yeah. If I was gonna do that with the you're an Erskine, Erskins don't do that for a thousand years. Erskins have lived in it. I'm like, I don't, it's just a name. Like do. Yeah. Do whatever you know suits you best. Do you ever see someone like or meet someone with a last name and you're like, you could just change that? Yeah, you know what I mean. Do you know what the origins of your last name? Like, because to me, Erskine sounds like a small weasel-like creature. Oh, thanks. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. Appreciate that. Yes, that's unfortunately, I have the weakest Patronus. No, it's Scottish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I just can. Yeah. Okay. Patronus is a reference to Harry Potter. For, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, we're gonna have to do this that time. way. I didn't laugh because I was like, "Oh yeah, Patronus." That's you a, think we're being funny? That but sounds it sounds like a cigar just, company. This is a recurring joke. So yeah, I don't I'm know. Not, I'm not really that. Clever. I don't know about Harry yeah. Potter. I don't know about Star Wars. I don't know about all the stuff you guys are into <laughs> these days. I didn't get to read your intro. So, so yeah, yeah. Who is Kellen? I don't even know. You never introduced. Kellen him. made his stand-up comedy debut on Conan. November 2017. Does that mean that your very first stand-up gig ever was being on Conan O'Brien as your debut? First time I ever did stand-up. Amazing. How do you <laughs> pull that off? Works. That's crazy. That was my first late night. I did America's Got Talent before that, but Whoa. it didn't go great. So I, That's don't, in here. I don't tell everyone about that. Oh, really? Oh, might be, you want me to delete that? About me? Oh, no, yeah. We got go it. We'll Dan, about. we had a new assistant, and this is the first week we got, he wrote, he he created a intro for us. Great. He also appeared on Jimmy Kimmel in the Amazon original series Inside Jokes. I watched that. That was great. He was also featured on season seven of NBC's America's Got Talent. Is that the one that went bad? Yeah. So okay, can not watch that. Skip that. How did it go bad? I want to hear tell us, Yeah. It just we'll uh, pick this up later. It was good. That <laughs> it was good for my first TV gig because it didn't. Uh, I was only on three episodes, but it was good for like just experiencing TV for the first time. Yeah. And on reality TV shows like that one, they just always have cameras in your face all the time, and that's sort of like the disadvantage of the age of digital technology is that if this was film, like reality TV wouldn't exist the way that it does. It'd be much more authentic because what they have with digital is that they just record everything constantly all the time. So then that that whatever narrative they want to tell about each person, that's what they give you, even though. They recorded, you know, easily 16 hours of me mm -hmm. over the course of th through interviews and B-roll and performance and everything. For America's Got Talent? For America's Got Talent. And wow. that's just how it is for everyone. There so are they, cameras. So they can get that like 15 second little like. Whichever is 15 seconds slice of life they thing? want. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So if they see someone that they don't really want to, uh, you know, have them proceed on the show, then they will just show like five seconds of them being nervous or something. So you feel uncomfortable okay. and you're like, well, this person isn't ready for this, even though maybe they were just, you yeah. know, waiting to go to the bathroom or something yeah. like that. So the, the <laughs> way, so it was good for me in that sense that I didn't get a lot of airtime and it's a good thing because I, um, uh, I was still growing as a comic at the time. I was mm. happy to be on, uh, but looking back, I'm, I'm glad that I did. So yeah, I was on for basically two and a half episodes and, and then I was off. Howie Mandel was one of the judges that year. This is 2012. And then a couple of years ago, I was doing a show in Santa Monica 
and Howie Mandel just showed up. This is just <laughs> this random a West Side Comedy Club in Santa Monica, just off the promenade, just this little club. And uh, he went up right after me. I didn't even know he was there. Wow. Um, but after his set, he came back to the green room and he was like, you are so funny. Why have I not heard of you? <laughs> and I was like, like, that's I right. Told this you is jokes. the first time. <laughs> remember this part yeah <laughs> I, I i think we just this whole interview we just want you to tell us about all your greatest failures okay yeah. for just <laughs> like a half hour just so here's the crazy the end of america's got talent just to show you how these shows work um even though i signed yeah, a thing but i think scoop, it's yeah. I, it's been a, enough years uh <laughs> so i thought that i was going to move on because i had a good set both times but they don't so they, they also don't show all of that yeah but and what Do you actually tell jokes to the actual judges like, did you actually, you yeah, did that, yeah. right? They, they was were that there. later yeah, or like yeah. the first, you go through a bunch of like different steps of like first, it's yeah, like the first these time, losers, what they don't nobody show, likes. Uh, uh, the cattle call at the beginning when it's thousands of people, the judges aren't even there for that. They're just coming right. through and you're yeah, just going yeah. from one room uh, in a big auditorium to another one, to a conference room and you're getting passed on from producer to producer. And if you make all of that, then they tell you that you're going to go there for the taping and the actual taping, they've narrowed 5,000 people down to 60 and then they do two, you know, two days of taping and then that's made into a whatever an hour-long episode so um so that's what happens there and then but the second episode that i was on i got my went from san francisco the second episode was in las vegas that's the next round yeah, at mm. the time it's very different now but with the way they did it at the time is that the three judges sit there uh in this massive 2000 seat theater and it's just them oh that's awkward it just doesn't work for comedy it works it's for so everything weird else. yeah yeah literally everything else it works if you're a juggler, a dancer, a singer, mm -hmm. you're not looking for a reaction every 10 seconds out of a crowd. Right. You mm -hmm. do. Everyone else does it to silence and it's fine. Yeah. But as a comic, <laughs> it looks like you're bombing. And that's yeah. what it looks like to everyone on TV because you're just Oof. telling a joke and then it would show the judges. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, even if they're laughing, it looks like you're bombing because you're in this yeah. giant yeah. place. <laughs> Only three people left at yeah. your joke. So <laughs> sad. <laughs> but yeah, like I walked everyone. <laughs> So I did, uh, they gave me 70 seconds. I did like four jokes and uh, they laughed a few times. Uh, but when they showed it later, they just showed one joke and then they just showed a, a joke that actually did well. And But then they just showed a clip of them sitting there. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, the, the way that they can kind of massage things mm -hmm. is that people see, oh, the judges didn't even laugh rather than people just making up their own mind. Oh, the judges didn't even laugh at that. It doesn't deserve to go on. So I thought I was going on because I did well in front of the three of them. The three people. And then I didn't. And at the time I was ignorant. I thought it was going to change mm -hmm. you know, my life. I had a very different perception of like yeah, what yeah. these shows could do for you. And they can if you make it all the way to the very, very end. But I thought that like two or three episodes, this is going to be my you know, my thing. Yeah. And maybe I can make it a little bit further. Um, but I thought I was going to make it on. I didn't. So I was upset. And uh, I, so I walked out, I go to the, back to the big room where everyone else is and waiting to get up. And this woman comes up to me, uh, one of the interviewers, and she's like, she seems to be very concerned because I was disappointed. Now I had to go back mm. to my family and tell them because the show hadn't aired yet. So they wouldn't see, it. I would just go home. I, mm. I was about to call my wife and say, I didn't make it. I, you know, mm. I, have, to, I have to fly home now. I thought I was going to go to New York. So I'm in this emotional state, still working the day job, all of this, you know, dreams crushed. So they want to the get time, you like, they want to get you breaking down. Yeah, but at the, yeah, I'm so vulnerable in this. And this is what happens with so many people. They do this on purpose. It's very designed, Oof. which is uh, gross. She comes up to me. How are you doing? Are you okay? And I'm just, I'm telling her and not remembering that I'm like, I'm mic'd and everything. Yeah. This is all on purpose. So as I'm saying, you know, I thought, I thought this was going to change my life. I, you know, I'm on the verge of tears. And as I'm saying that, in my peripheral vision, <laughs> I see this boom mic just slowly <laughs> lowering into view. That's fantastic. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they had a camera off in the distance yeah. that's just zoomed in that I couldn't see. So it's almost like hidden camera emotional moment. Yeah, and yeah. that's what they want to get. And they're just like pulling it out of did you because that? that's compelling. To They did. Oh, yeah. And it's buried somewhere on YouTube to... that I hope nobody ever finds is this moment where I just like Dan, Dan can you go looking for that on YouTube? <laughs> Assistant, go find that clip. <laughs> but it's just so gross because it'll just, be in the show notes they do that with people all day people who have just been like <laughs> yeah they feel like their whole life has been yeah. shattered and luckily luckily i've done enough stuff since then that i realize in the scheme of things that that didn't really matter but at the time i thought yeah. my world had you know had fallen down and they yeah. just want to grab every part of Juice that it, yeah. and show it to everyone yeah. yeah it's just when i was in junior high my friend who was kind of a dork you know, i was a dork too we were dorks uh the most popular girl in class 
asked him to the dance. And then when he went, it was just so they could all laugh at him Ugh. and and just humiliate him. And I feel like a lot of these reality shows are like, it's like if all those kids that set that up together, like we're given a big budget. <laughs> like, exactly. How can you bring this oh, yeah. bigger and make it, we can all join in. Like, That's so true. <laughs> not completely. Yeah. I and mean, there's those inspiring stories, but those feel so manufactured too. But um, yeah. anyway, it's got to be fascinating to be part of something like that. I'm not done with your bio though. Okay. <laughs> Um, Give us more failures. He has garnered over 30 million views with his clips on dry bar comedy. That's like the whole population of the United States. Well, no, that's at 300 million. Yeah, that's like, it's like 10 percent. It's like it's seven, still a lot of people. It's like seven percent. <laughs> that's like all the Mormons, at least. We haven't mentioned that Kellen is hey, a Mormon. Excuse me, Mormon is a very triggering term. Okay, but we can't say Mormon. I'm so sorry. Latter Day Saints, who until recently were known as Mormons. Previously known Pre- as Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I wanted to have you on because I saw you on because we mentioned this on here, mm. uh, the show Inside Jokes on Amazon. Yeah, Which and you I was can told also you watch through Vid Angel. Okay, because I'm the only clean comic. You're the one clean so comic. For those of you who are. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I loved about it. I was so fascinated by. Um, I could relate to it so much. Mm. Um, not just being somebody trying to be funny, and but you know having faith and like not just being somebody who has you know the gates are down you can just i'll make any joke be as offensive as i want mm-hmm. um but your relationship with your wife and your family um when you're making this pursuit that's you're not going to try to do real estate or some uh some job that's more like there's a structure to it you get this degree you <laughs> go get this predictable and predictable result. and result you're not getting a real job it feels yeah. like yeah it can <laughs> no, feel like you're aggressive you're wasting your <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm saying it as a brother in that yeah, <laughs> right, no, battle, I right? <laughs> I could relate. There were moments in that show when you were on there, I was crying with you. Or I, you, you weren't crying, I just, I was. But when you were talking Wait, to your America's wife. America's Got Talent? No. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I've cried on a lot of TV, so <laughs> I get them all mixed up. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a compilation of all your crying moments. Um, But no, when you were, I, um, and it's been a while since I watched it, but just uh yeah reaching out to your wife uh the support that she had for you oh, yeah. and but i could feel your vulnerability um when you felt like you weren't going to make it and I'll, i think the moment that you got the call and you found out you're going to be in do montreal spoiler alert mm-hmm. that's what the show's about is about these comedians ruined getting uh sad making it to the biggest comedy festival or whatever in the whole world or something I but maybe know. that whole crying moment was manu- manufactured and you've yeah, been manipulated it? anything yeah was it real <laughs> no that was yeah okay. that was really yeah i was, I was okay. pinching my leg really hard uh, <laughs> to make it happen no, but i like how you built that up and then just just uh discredited it all of it because <laughs> you're like uh, you know you, you you didn't think you were gonna make it, and then you found out you're gonna make it into the biggest comedy festival <laughs> in the world or whatever i don't know something but and whatever it is <laughs> but it, you made it into something is it in the world i don't know i don't it know is, all yeah i know it is like the big every comic There's, there might be bigger thing. ones in you know pakistan or something. hong kong yeah they're big oh, on north, north, sure. north korea <laughs> north korea you know, is big on stand-up stand-up. originated <laughs> yeah in mongolia yeah. So other than that, other it's than the biggest. That, yeah. So that was, and I saw that you bounce your jokes off your wife on that show. I do. I'm yeah, curious yeah. about that process because I, I'm terrified to bounce jokes off my wife. I think we talked about this on on this yeah, show. Yeah, my before. wife doesn't think I'm funny, so it doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, she's unfortunately she's a pretty accurate barometer too, um, mm-hmm. because I mean she will laugh when she sees when something is funny. But yeah, on that show, they only showed like I tried like five or six things, and it was a mm-hmm. very very real moment. Hmm. Uh, where she's just like, uh, you know, <laughs> but that's the beauty of, of, of a good joke is that even someone who doesn't necessarily want to, uh, laughter is an involuntary response. So mm-hmm. in a way it's almost the most honest thing you can say to someone without speaking. Mm-hmm. If a laugh just comes out, then it's like, you can't lie about, and I know what her fake laugh would sound like anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so when it does, it's just like when you're trying to make someone laugh or that game, you're trying to make your kids laugh, who can mm-hmm. make each other laugh. Like you, there's, it's undeniable. It just, it comes out even when you're trying not to. So yeah, it looks, it can kind of look like she's just trying not to make me feel good about myself, but she's essentially <laughs> protecting me. Because... Yeah, no, no. It, 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 I didn't take it that way at all. I was just, I, I, when I saw that, I was like, man, cause I remember when I was working on my own, I, I was working on trying to do stand up comedy. Just, I was mainly just writing a ton of ideas 
we talked about this a little bit when we had lunch before we had this podcast, but, uh, but the thought of reading those to my wife, I don't know why it terrified me. I didn't want to find out they're bad. Maybe, maybe I that think was that's it. it. Yeah, it's being yeah. a noob. People want to, I think that's why like Twitter is so popular too, is because people who people can just tweet jokes out there and mm-hmm. pretend like they're just killing it. You know, without <laughs> without actually getting a response back or hearing yeah, anything. Yeah, that's true. It also works like in a reverse engineered sort of way where I won't intentionally be coming up with a stand-up joke, but I'll, my wife and I will just be in conversation and I'll say something that'll make her laugh and I think, oh, that might work, you uh-huh. know? And so I'll write that down. And that <laughs> isn't always true too. Sometimes I try and prove her wrong. Like I'll be so committed to this idea that I think is funny that she won't laugh at it and I'll try it out anyway to be like well I'll show you and half the time <laughs> I'm like okay fine you're right <laughs> I remember uh, I think Jerry Seinfeld one time said that uh, Twitter is like his nightmare for telling jokes because you don't get any response like yeah it'd be like putting something out there and just I think that was funny I don't know you know <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. No, yeah. and I like, and I'm susceptible to like, if I only get a certain number of likes, I pull yeah. it down because maybe it wasn't good. You know, it's a very, oh, yeah. it's weird, but it's also, it's kind of like that. Uh, I hate it, but I have to use it because it's a way of getting myself out there. You know, you kind of have to use whatever medium you can, even if you hate them, like yeah, yeah. podcasting. Yeah, <laughs> amen. Agreed. <laughs> That's something I find fascinating about Norm Macdonald because he, I don't know if he just decided to do it when he went on Twitter, but because I think his jokes are so based on his delivery. I don't know how many, I've seen him post some of his jokes in Twitter format and they definitely don't, they're not yeah. as funny, but he just went full on serious on Twitter pretty much. He hardly ever jokes on Twitter. Yeah, it's <laughs> odd. And half the time he like predicts uh, like sports yeah, outcomes. Golf games and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever, this is for me, which I kind of like that about it. Like he's just, I don't care. This Twitter's for me. It's not for not for you guys. My career. Yeah. It's Maybe he so doesn't odd. even know that it, that people can see yeah, it. Yeah, he doesn't know it works. <laughs> he, know he thinks he's texting somebody. Yeah. His own little gambling <laughs> diary. Because I don't like who is retweeting like Tiger is now um, um, on a par three hole. It's like, it's <laughs> yeah, like someone like, retweets what? it. But then you yeah. always see those always get like hundreds of retweets too. Uh, when yeah, someone like makes a, yeah. does, some celebrity just says something mundane and they'll get like oh, thousands yeah. of retweets. You're like, who's yeah, I remember. Yeah, people. one time, a couple of years Mark ago, Mark Hamill. Anything he says. Yeah, anything. Oh yeah, Justin Bieber. One time, I uh, put uh, "Hello June" on the first of June, oh my gosh. and it got like two million likes. And I was like, <laughs> I just spent like an hour polishing my dumb joke yeah. <laughs> that gets two retweets. It's sad. Wow. Uh, I think you're funnier than Justin Bieber. Just so you know. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Everyone needs an ego boost. You could put that on your next, like your review from your next comedy special. Funnier. Funnier than Justin, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Kyle Mann, <laughs> editor of Babylon B. <laughs> I'm still not through this bio. Oh, yeah. It's a long bio. We got a long one. This is our new interview format where we just slowly read the bio. <laughs> slowly make it through the bio. Uh, with his signature laid back style and intelligent material. Oh, wait. How old is this bio? Did you write this, Dan, or did you find this? I think he copied it. Oh, oh man, this isn't off my website though. He has been named one of the top ten new comics to watch for this year's New York Comedy Festival. Is that this year? That was in 2017. So okay. this is a little yeah. old. My website has a bio that's updated. Oh, Dan, Dan's Go, fired. Going to the Dan, archives. you're fired. <laughs> Did you guys start? Have you? Has this been two years in the process of getting me here? Yeah, the, yeah. We wrote this bio two time, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> in hopes that you would we've been we've been uh we've you been messaging you on twitter and you just kept not responding <laughs> yes, and ignoring me did twitter <laughs> exist in 2017 <laughs> no <laughs> apparently because i mean people are getting getting their old tweets dug up from, from like back. 10 years ago yeah. Yeah. yeah so it did do you have any old damaging tweets that we can dig up <laughs> i don't that is something i auditioned for snl last year and it did uh it did cross my mind you apparently weren't racist enough i didn't have anything yeah <laughs> There was nothing in there. And I was like, I wasted, when I found out that I didn't get it, I was like, I wasted all that time back scrolling through Twitter. <laughs> like when I was on my Southwest flight, paid eight bucks for that Wi-Fi. I tried to search through my old tweets and they're just incredibly boring. Right. Just <laughs> incredibly boring. That's all I did. I ended up deleting a few hmm. and then saving a few to reuse now that I have more followers. That's yeah. it. That's yeah, all. That's smart. Yeah. And you waste the old funny jokes when you have like 200 followers. And right, yeah. And now that I have 1,100. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like your people's perception of things like. Like you fame. Think, you know, you, you're on a TV show on Amazon. You know, how are you? 1,100 followers? But Twitter's like. 
Twitter's a much tougher animal than I think a lot of people realize. It takes a certain kind of person to get like crazy follows on there, I think. It's weird and it's interesting, the whole concept. I actually do have uh, 3,076. Okay. Just, <laughs> I don't, I think you just, top I just don't want to be too self-deprecating. <laughs> rounding up, I ra- realized rounding down there. now how specific that was. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> I'm going to verify. But it is interesting to see. uh, Okay, 72. Dan Dan can verify. But it is interesting to see how differently uh, different things matter like this some, and what the currency of each social media thing is. And like I said, I don't like it, but I also have to pay attention to it at the same time. YouTube's the same way. Like Facebook is kind of becoming the new YouTube. So now a video that, you know, that would have gotten 40 million hits, a uh, video views, it gets like one and a half million, but that's the new 40 million. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just constantly changing. So what I'm saying is don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I just followed you and became your 3,075th Oh, follower. man. That means I lost two and just gained one. <laughs> That's always know. how it is. I try to say something funny. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get some shares. So you yeah, get, get some followers and then I, lo- I lose followers. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The trick of Twitter, it seems works. like, is taking stances on things that are divisive. Yeah, you're so you supposed have to, to be you have to you get have to, to be the real right, political. on the right side of something. Everyone's like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, and the crazy thing, too, is that you don't need something to be amazingly funny uh, what you need is a more famous person to retweet what they right. thought was funny. That's the crazy thing. Like when I was on when I was on Conan, Seth Meyers retweeted me the next day, and I know that it wasn't a coincidence. He had to have been watching because I know he's good fans with Darcy Carden and with uh, her husband. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the tweet that I had that day, like if I, I if I knew that was going to happen, I would have changed it. Yeah, <laughs> because it wasn't a great. It was maybe a B B plus or whatever. It was sure. some dumb thing about like I think that I bet that dogs are way too excited on their way to go dog sledding for the first time. <laughs> Well, it's just a silly, you know. Yeah, it sounds and I have, really exciting to dogs. Yeah, I have a ton of jokes that are better than that, but that <laughs> one ended up getting like way more retweets than I'd ever gotten. I got way more followers than I've ever gotten because one guy mm-hmm. who was more, like I said, I had plenty of jokes that were way better than that, but because none of them got noticed. So I think that is what happens in Twitter. If you, uh, I mean, if you're on a, in a movie or something like that, that's just going to happen. But growing on Twitter, just on Twitter. Yeah, it's just from people that are much more popular than you retweeting one thing, and boom, everyone else is like, "Oh, this guy is fun," you know? What I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, well, there's a flip side of that too, because I've had, you know, because I got some. If we're name dropping here, Nick Offerman is a good friend, and and when he, because cool. he did the voice of Axe Cop for me, and uh, when so every once in a while, if I need something shared, he'll retweet it for me. That's great, and it's amazing a guy with that many followers that's that famous. A lot of times it doesn't really... It doesn't, it doesn't do much. It doesn't yeah, do much. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. So I, I do think that, you know, I, probably there was still an element to your joke that was funny enough that like it helped. He gave it a boost, but I think it... Uh, we, I mean, that's, that's what we do with all day, the, the, the weirdness and the fickleness of what gets shared and what doesn't yeah. on the internet. That was your one name drop for the day, by the way, Ethan. <laughs> Ethan's always name dropping people in Hollywood. Whatever. It's like, oh yeah, me and Nick Offerman hanging out. <laughs> He's my one name drop. That's all I got. That's it. I'm going to read Kellen's tweet. Okay. Okay. Dog sledding must sound really fun to a dog on his way to do it for the first time. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I ruined the delivery. <laughs> You're butchering it. Butchering it. You got to do it in a... It, but he, he got 143 retweets. You got to yeah. do so that it was all on in set. a signature laid back style. Dog sledding must sound really fun to a dog on his way to do it for the first time. <laughs> was, that, was that Kellen? <laughs> was that Kellen-esque? How would you it's deliver that? Weird, How would you deliver uh, that joke? I don't... I've never said it out loud. That's long. not a stand-up? Uh, uh, dog... <laughs> No, I'd have to say uh, dog sledding. I don't even know. I can read you my newest one. I yeah, finally got to read it. And I think that's the thing too. That's tough is seeing something do well and then a year goes by and that's still your pinned tweet. By the mm. way, this sounds so petty now that I'm talking about it out loud, but I do spend a lot of time on this because it's so, uh, is it important? Um, but so my newest one, I finally got to replace it. And it's, I'll say this one with my, uh, with my voice. Mm-hmm. Now I'm all yeah, self-confident. Yeah. How do I talk? I don't even know. <laughs> I order ginger ale on airplanes like they don't sell it anywhere else. <laughs> it is feel special. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about true. 80 yeah. retweets worth of laughter from you guys. See, now that's, <laughs> I need, now I'm, I'm, I need, I don't know who. Well, we need, we need to make the delivery more awkward. Like we need to be about 12 inches away from each other oh, instead of like three feet away from each other. <laughs> and that way it'll... It's just weird to sit in a room with someone and like, 
like when I'm trying to come up with headlines and ideas and I'm yeah, pitching yeah. them to like these guys, I'm like trying to read the headline and they're just like, huh? And I'm like, oh, and yeah. yeah, half the time Kyle's got his headphones on. I'm like, never mind. It's gold. I know it's gold. I'm yeah. just running with it. it. <laughs> well, there is, it is interesting. The idea of like, uh, of reading a headline, uh, because there is no tone of voice. I think that's where a lot of the humor comes from. And the way that those jokes are designed are more toward that. Um, how would someone read this rather than how would someone hear this? Uh, mm -hmm. Same with the onion that like, um, I watched the, uh, the movie that they did a few years ago, which yeah. was terrible. Yeah, the Onion movie. Or yeah, something. and I realized that so much of that humor just comes from reading. Sometimes yeah. I don't yeah, even you look at the pictures. It. I just love reading, and it. it's so it's so funny because yeah, of what you create in your head. It's like Stephen King when he's talking about description, is that your job is not to describe everything; it's to lead someone just far enough where they fill in the rest. Uh, mm -hmm. They fill in the rest, mm -hmm. and that's what I try and do with a lot of my jokes too. Um, is you just let just the saying enough and line. yeah yeah it's kind of treating them be more uh intelligent right and people mm. feel me about like i have this joke about um the the map of the united states and how it looks like we were colonized the opposite way from east like from west to east because like if you look at the map it looks like there's one guy in charge of designing the whole thing uh, but his boss just gave him an outline of the country and yeah, said, you got to fill us in with 50 states starting from the left side. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, there's plenty of room. Yeah, yeah, I saw that on your special. I love it. And that, yeah. that is a great example. So, like, and it's, yeah, in that yeah. moment that like laughter will start and then it'll grow and Because the audience is doing that. It's a cool yeah. feeling, yeah. And it's so in. much more fulfilling, I think, for both of us because it's not, because there is another way to tell the joke where I just say, have you looked at a map? It, it gets all big on one side and then small on the other, like a guy was right. running out of room. And it mm -hmm. would still be funny, but it's not as funny as just sort of hinting up to a point. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so I, I try and write more jokes like that where it's, uh, you know, Those just ones really, work, really right? smart stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Super, Super smart. Super so intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's really brave of you to rely on Americans' knowledge of geography <laughs> to for a punchline. It is a litmus test, and I'll say that joke kills two thirds of the time. And I tell it pretty pretty close to the beginning of my act, and I can kind of tell how the rest of it's going to go out. How smart the crowd is. <laughs> you can just throw in the towel after that. If yeah, or how subtle. All right, guys. Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will explain every joke to the death from here on out because you guys didn't get that one. Daniel Tosh has a great line because he's very good at that too um or he he starts a joke off that is supposed to be the whole joke and then he goes all right i'll feed you baby birds <laughs> and then he he's explains gonna, the rest spoon of feed the it. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> so i mean you do you do clean comedy and like do you see that as a handicap or do you see that more as like a creative challenge or I, how, how do you look at that? Luckily for me, it's just it's just who I am. So it's not like right. uh, it, it was never like uh, I'm going to be the clean comedian so that I can whatever <laughs> get corporate gigs, which is fine. I do, and I'm available. <laughs> Ecallen at gmail dot com. But the clean comic at gmail. It just oh, that's not his email. <laughs> yeah. The clean. That's the other thing is I don't. I am clean, but I don't like the stigma. I don't like the label of clean right. comic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I am. I enjoy a comic like. Uh, Nate Bargatze, where after you watch him, you're like, oh yeah, he didn't swear, he didn't talk about you, but you're not thinking during his set like, oh, I bet he does really good at birthday parties for kids, you know? <laughs> it's just there, and yeah, so that's yeah. that's what I strive for. Do you for. do that's birthday just, parties for kids? Uh, I am a <laughs> <laughs> My base rate is three grand. Um, but I, uh, so it's just who I am. And when I was in the beginning, I, I, I did not so much with dirty stuff, but with the stuff that like, I made the mistake of just trying to joke around with what I thought maybe an audience would think is funny. And a lot of uh, beginning comedians uh, sort of do that. Mm -hmm. What would a comedian do? It took me years to like, ironically get to the point where I, I'm just making jokes about what I think is funny. Mm -hmm. And I cut out the ones that people don't like, because ultimately the audience is the editor, but I want to at least have my part in this land. You know this like when uh, not to compare myself to a, a like Picasso, but when he was painting, he was never like, "Wow, what do the masses really love?" <laughs> you know, this is, you know, it's just uh, you do your thing and uh, whatever 
whatever works will naturally stick. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, uh, you know, I keep that. And for artists, it's, you know, they see their paintings go up in value and they didn't really have a full say in that. No, no artist would be able to predict this one will go up for auction at half a million. This one will do 30. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, for, uh, for me, for stand up, it is, um, I mean, and I was raised and I still am, you know, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. And so I was raised in an environment where, you know, we, we didn't curse. And uh, it is funny. I, I will admit that there were some shows early on in where I tried and it just didn't work. It didn't sound right because it's <laughs> not even, it's like, it was like, you know, someone like a kid who learns a second language in their household because yeah. both of their parents speak different languages and they grow up speaking with no accent versus mm -hmm. like, if you just started, you know, Mandarin right now, you like know, like a, like a cop who's really bad at trying to go undercover and act like a drug dealer or something. Yeah. Like, Hey guys, what, <laughs> what sort of uh, cocaine do we have in boxes today? How, would, uh, <laughs> how many drugs may I purchase from you, sir? <laughs> 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 yeah. It's, it's the same thing. So it just, it didn't, uh, it didn't work out. And so, and like I said, it wasn't just a, the cursing. It was, uh, but it was just topics in general that, it, it sounds very contrived. If it's not what you actually think is funny, you're just, yeah, yeah. you know, it's uh, the yeah, it makes sense. perspective. Like, when is, you is start important. out, you, you like, you go for what you think people are going to laugh at. Right. And that right. is a thing. I think that's a, an exciting about almost any art form is that when you start really making something you love and that resonates, wow. Like I'm not alone. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Which on that topic, like, are you, I alone? don't know of, yeah. <laughs> are you I alone? don't know of a lot of <laughs> latter day saints who are stand-up comics is that are a lot of them just closeted or <laughs> are there a lot of closeted <laughs> or LDS was it people? a lonely thing like a pursuit for you is that like a lonely pursuit no, there's a ton i'm just the only good one so <laughs> no there's you there have like mormon nightclubs <laughs> or latter-day saint nightclubs <laughs> latter-day saint sir Sorry. No, is, i was just curious if you have like a whole comedy set just for mormons of jokes only mormons oh not at all no i don't know more yeah and that was a thing i don't have and i never wanted to be labeled as like the the mormon comic either and by the way there are plenty of like really that's the name of this podcast the mormon the mormon comic the mormon comic the clean the clean the mormon clean comic just pigeon available for parties right yeah after this show i'm only gonna get hired for mormon corporate birthday parties um, no, and it's not that I'm like ashamed. I just, I didn't want to be pigeonholed and I, I, I feel like, uh, there are plenty of other things to joke about. It's, it's a similar reason for why I don't talk about, uh, you know, uh, sex or other topics like that. Like there are a trillion topics to choose from. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to avoid a couple of those. Cause I want to talk about what I think is funny to me. And by the way, I wouldn't say like, if there was, a a, a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who who did who that was their thing or like that was the thing that make that made them laugh the most was yeah, talking yeah. about church that's fine and maybe they'll be good at that but they're also only going to appeal to a worldwide audience of so many you know what i mean yeah, it's yeah. such a small facet of the entire world and i feel like it's it's fun to be able to make other people laugh too and well, I, I want fans in every no matter what they're uh, whatever don denomination, you know, if any at all, it's not my, it, I haven't, you know, yeah. it's not my, my, uh, my you mission. So that, I will say Ryan Hamilton is amazing. He is, uh, he's another member uh, of the church. He's, he's killing I it right now. He's got a Netflix special. Smile guy. He's yeah. The smile guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there are, there, there's, uh, uh, that makes sense. Us. Yeah. Yeah. I always suspect the property brothers are Mormons. Anybody? The property yeah, brothers? Property Brothers? They're not comedy, not comedians at all. Oh, it just okay. came into my head. I, I feel know, like yeah. LDS people can recognize other LDS people. Yeah, I can, Property is, Brothers. LDS or no? Thing. Or Joe? <laughs> I don't know. I just, they feel like they're from some... <laughs> Let me see a picture. Are they chiropractors <laughs> or dentists? Because that will... They're real estate determine. guys. They're, okay. super they're on HGTV yeah, yeah. or something, right? twin brothers. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's a total side. So, but I didn't... I, I really want to hear, like, just... doesn't have to be a super long epic biography, but, like, just that... How did that start? Like, I don't know what you thought your life was going to be. Did you want to be a stand-up comedian from the beginning, sitting in your Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint? We really got to shorten that. <laughs> we gotta, maybe we could come up with a good... The Church uh, of Laddie. Laddie. The Laddie Church. <laughs> saints i wish i had that story a lot of comics have that story of like my parents put on steve martin record when i was four and then i knew what i was going to do for or the you know or they were like you're going to be that. a doctor like your dad yeah 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 and I you were secretly listening that. to comedy I, in your room and, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I just, in fact, I just uh, met somebody recently, a friend of uh, one of my kids, uh, my daughter, and she said that she wanted to be a fireman when she grew up. And I was like, oh, what made you want to do that? And she's like, well, my dad's a fireman. I just think that's interesting that like of all of everything, or you hear about these military dads. I just, uh, I met a guy in New Jersey who was like, his dad was a cop. And his, so all of his brothers were cops and he decided to go into entertainment and he became the black sheep of the family because yeah. he didn't do the one thing everyone else did. And I do think that it's <laughs> it's a limo, little limiting to me. Like if my kid wanted to be a comedian, that, that would be cool. But I am also not going to be like weirdly offended that he doesn't yeah. choose yeah. the one of so many choices that you can <laughs> do in life, yeah. especially when like there are so many things like I, to, the important thing to me is that my kids find something that they find interesting and that they're good at. Like when that Venn diagram, when it meets, cause it took me, I, I was interested in a lot of things, but this is one thing that I kept coming back to the humor was always uh, sort of kind of where it naturally came and so like and especially in this country when there are so many things that you can capitalize that you can make money off of that you can't in most other places why not try and marry those two things and make money off of them and so uh yeah so as a kid i um i heard uh, a friend of mine gave me a stephen wright cassette when i was like 13 14 and he's like a one-liner comic from the 80s okay and he's been he was in stuff like so i married an axe murder he's always the same guy he's like he's bald but he has like kind of long scarlet oh yeah, 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 he yeah talks yeah. like yep. this yeah yep. he has a great just all of his jokes are brilliant he's he'll, he has a joke that's like uh went to a hardware store and bought some used paint it was in the shape of a house <laughs> And that's his it's whole, all monotone, right? Yeah, so, yeah. it's like great. a big mullet or something. So at that point, I knew that I wanted to try stand up. It was never a thing. I wish I could, like I said, be ambitious and be like, I'm going to be the greatest comic in the world. But I knew at that point that I wanted to try it. Huh. And, and so how that's old were you? It was I was th 12, 13 at the time. Wow. And then the first time I did stand up, I was 22. And even then, like the first year of stand up, it was just great to actually get a joke every once in a while. I bombed most of the time. But when a joke did work, it was the greatest feeling in the world. Even mm. then, I was like, I, I just want to be able to host shows for the rest of my life. It was, ne I, you know, it was never. And even like I get to a place where I am now, like when I did Conan, and I still, like I said, I think it's a confidence. Maybe it's a self esteem issue, but I'm still like standing behind the, the, the waiting for those curtains to part just standing there like what am i doing here yeah does anyone know i'm not so, yeah. this was not supposed to happen how did i you trick know? all these people this is not yeah <laughs> i'm supposed to be watching this i'm not supposed to be in this place <laughs> yeah so i'm still in that uh i still just have that sort of perspective but like i said i wish that not everybody has that there are people who are like why am i not famous yet yeah you know? those are the weirdest yeah like how is it not obvious like none of us it's so hard how do you think you should get it yeah, yeah. So if you hadn't made it in comedy, like what would be, what would be your career? Uh, I, it, it would. Or I would have made it. I hate the word "made it." The term is such a. It, it could mean anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it really means nothing, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh I I would I would be a writer. I would definitely be like trying to either write on a show or be like a novelist. Like writing was always something. So that another impossible to, career. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I still I'm, trying, I'm trying to get you to say like car salesman. Or something. Yeah. yeah have you ever considered doing? Do you ever have a plan do, do, B? Do, do some construction maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Not just throwing it out I'm there. Try and encourage you to do something. There's some good money. A little more steady. Yeah. <laughs> I worked for a water softening company for years. That is what I did. Yeah, and I just that I language. Didn't, I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. Life. Yeah, nice. but that is probably where I still would be if I hadn't. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. the question. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Where can our fans uh, purchase uh, these water softening? <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm plugging. <laughs> what I used to do. We're ruining your oh, career awesome. in, in one podcast interview. So <laughs> I worked with John Panette one time. Do you remember him? He was great. He was a huge dude, like 400 pounds, but so great, energetic, so funny. He had a uh, sort of this iconic bit on Chinese buffets. Okay. He's great if you look him up, but he uh he he uh died uh, a few years ago. Uh, but he was so nice and so funny and he's this East Coast guy, huge East Coast guy, and uh he uh, I was so excited to meet him because I'd seen him on TV and everything. Mm -hmm. He was in like the last episode oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of Seinfeld. He's just just uh uh He's in Beetlejuice. Is that guy in Beetlejuice? Was he in Beetlejuice? I don't know. Okay. Um Were you not allowed to watch that? <laughs> For our homeschool fans. For our homeschool yeah. fans. Yeah, Kyle probably didn't see it either. So, And our LDS listeners, I guess. So I met, Sorry, when I met him for the first time, he said, uh, so is this uh, is this all you do? And I was like, no, I work for uh, 
this water softening company. And he goes, oh man, my water's really hard. So could you help me out with it? And he was like, I didn't know it was a bit, but he was like <laughs> asking me advice and I was so bummed out <laughs> that that's, that's what awesome. he wanted. But at the end of the week, he gave me 50, a $50 bill. Wow. And he said, I remember how it is to, how it was to be you. Hmm. And that really stuck with me that hmm. he actually is the only comic who's ever like given me money you know on a mm -hmm. compliment like that and it was really yeah, yeah. neat to see that uh because i worked with guys on the other end of the spectrum who wouldn't even talk to me for the whole week jeff dunham where they just <laughs> well, no, no names <laughs> they, they but were, yeah jeff there was dunham. no sense of sympathy did his puppets or talk anything to you? Did like his, that they were yeah, yeah they were just <laughs> behind as i start to go into the green room they're like this is just for guy. us yeah. yeah you know what's crazy he does his puppets when he does radio he brings what? puppets into the studio. You know how like comics huh. would do radio uh, yeah, before, yeah. like at a club. He probably doesn't have to anymore because he does stadiums. But when he was doing clubs, he, you know, he get up at six a.m. before on the day of the show or the day before. Oh, you do like the would, morning shows or whatever. Bring his puppets into the studio to like talk into the microphone. <laughs> That's just Nobody bonkers can see to me. Yeah, yeah but the uh, guy sells tickets, so I can't. Make fun of him. So are I, you saying publicly on the Babylon Bee podcast that Jeff Dunham's a big jerk? <laughs> to me. <laughs> we always he need just, an no, angle. I'm just saying he didn't yeah. say anything. So that's going to become the title sense. of this. Anything people will click on. We need the controversy. Clicks, we need that. One Jeff of the Dunham shows I did, it was when he was just on edge about to do theaters, which is kind of the goal for every comic. And then mm -hmm. some, you know, like Kevin Hart and Jeff Dunham, Dan Cook got to the point where they did stadiums after theaters. But he hadn't, Jeez. he was just breaking into theaters. So I was doing this comedy club in San Jose with him, which is essentially a theater. It's way too big to be a comedy club. It's, it was like my home club. I love it. But it's very mm -hmm. difficult because to do one on a club, you got to fill the place up. Most clubs see like 150, 200. But when you have 150 people that are seated in a place that seats 550, then the sh it's it's not good. Like, mm -hmm. could, the show still feels off. Kind of like three judges. Yeah, <laughs> staring <laughs> And America's Got Talent. So, but he would fill this place out. So there, yeah. I was doing shows there. He was on my whole home club. I'd never done shows that were sold out. So I'd never had that actual feeling before of people just, they were just into it. Because then even like when a joke doesn't do really well, you still have like a hundred people laughing. So it's yeah, still, yeah. and it feeds on itself. And so I had this great set, greatest set I'd ever had in like three or four years of doing comedy felt like a rock star like on top of the world things are going great i'm working with jeff dunham and killed it right now hmm. and uh he had this thing that another comic i've worked with has done this where most com every, every other comic in the world you do your your set and then you introduce them you you name a few credits if it's chris Catan, he has 11 things he, he wants you to memorize but oh, really? with, yeah, oh, you introduced it's, it's them. so weird yeah working with chris Catan. but you introduced them yeah you do uh and you've seen him on late night blah, 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 blah. welcome to the stage huh. but with him you just end your set you get off, the lights go down, and then he has this, ladies and gentlemen, this big sort okay. of like monster yeah. truck uh, voiceover <laughs> thing. That Sunday. Music Sunday. that's Sunday. written just yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, so I put the mic in the stand, and uh, I said that I walk off, and I wait for that to happen, but he's backstage. He's right there. Everything's gone dark, and the music doesn't start, and he's back there. Just imagining him standing in the dark brooding. And this is <laughs> just his puppets yelling at him. Why do you even do this? <laughs> this is for children. So, so I am feeling better than I ever have in stand up. Just a rock star. And I, I get backstage and he says, Hey, the, uh, the staff member, they didn't wheel my cart out with my, with the puppets. Could you do that? Oh my God. Like right then. <laughs> what? So this is what it looks like to the audience. I kill it. Bam, mic in the stand, lights go out, couldn't have been better. And then moments later, <laughs> same guy, and same guy just pushing out this yeah. squeaky wheeled <laughs> cart with puppets inside to the oh, middle of the stage. Oh, you pushed it out? Oh, I they pushed saw you. it they out, yeah. See you. Well, they all saw me, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. the lights are out on the stage, but the rest of the place <laughs> is lit up. So yeah, yeah. Just, and then it's immediately everyone's like, Oh, that guy just works here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then I walk off and then boom, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Isn't it's, that like the weird thing about when you do a show, if you do like an amazing show in another city you've never been in, hmm. isn't it a weird feeling after that's over and then you actually don't know anybody there and it's just you're back to being like nobody's laughing at you now. You're just a guy walking on the street. Oh yeah, it's weird. It's so weird. And then you're alone yeah. in your hotel room. Like, Completely. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like you're Superman and when you walk out of the club, the door catches your cape and your whole costume <laughs> just flies off. 
and you just walk. You have that ready? That was a really good uh, no, analogy. But that's, no, I'm just good at this. I, I wrote that joke no. and I, I passed it across. Oh, you write for Kellen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you write for thanks. Kellen. Kellen, Kellen write me more for, of those. He writes for. Uh, we have at the end of we we haven't finished this <laughs> this bio. <laughs> It says, uh, Kellen has written for some of the top comedians in the industry, including Howie Mandel and Frank Caliendo. So that means you wrote for him and he wrote he for wrote, them. Yeah. And maybe they write for, who knows? So I don't know Jeff where Dunham. he found this. This must have been a bio sent like with a writing packet or something. Because that's not something <laughs> I usually mention. With Howie Mandel, so it was the day after uh, I met Do I need to edit him. that out? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, it's fine because I'll, I'll, I can explain it right now. All of Howie um, Mandel's I didn't funniest put jokes. People. <laughs> you were written no, by him. He probably didn't use anything, but he was super nice. Uh, the day after I met him, his assistant uh, contacted me and I. he invited me to his, uh, he has a production company and he, we just went through some jokes that he was going to do at JFL because he's like, he's up there every year and he puts on a televised show that's all over Canada. And so we just ran some jokes by me and I tried to punch him up, but I was also super nervous at the time. So I don't think I added anything. <laughs> so that's probably why I took that out eventually. And then Frank Kelly, <laughs> Frank's, Frank's fun. I'll throw him like some premises and uh -huh. then uh, i think the only one he's ever kind of kept was one where uh because he very much knows what he wants and i have a difficult uh -huh. time writing for that which is good because he's very specific that he doesn't he's I, what the reason why i think he's the best impressionist um is because he won't just do like a typical impressionist will do what if christopher walken worked at mcdonald's and then it's uh <laughs> yeah oh yeah fries yeah I can't, everyone has a christopher walken but i can't do it that was great um <laughs> But what he does? Can you or, do more? Or yeah, Christopher just, Walken for more impressions? <laughs> I don't even know. What about Gary Busey uh, <laughs> working, trying to work a sewing machine? <laughs> Needles, yeah. So Ouch, my is, finger. <laughs> so you take this guy, put him in a silly situation. That's what the well, regular and people yeah, yeah. people eat it up. Uh, <laughs> or they don't have to do anything, and they just like quote the line from "Get down." You know yeah, how many times yeah, have oh. you heard that? And uh, it's just so Frank's very good because he 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 puts him in very very specific situations. He has a great, and he'll do people that don't you don't usually hear, or that sound weird coming out of him. Like his Morgan Freeman is dead on, but it's mm -hmm. so weird seeing it come out of his body. And Morgan Freeman, his Morgan Freeman, will like narrate what's happening in the show. Uh, uh, what the audience didn't realize is that Frank couldn't remember what joke to do next. That's kind of what he'll do. That's my impression of Frank. Impression yeah. of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Can I do an impression of? Oh, <laughs> maybe like that. oh man, we'll really inception this episode. Yeah. So he has this, uh, who's the guy who played Chris Hemsworth. He has this great Chris Hemsworth and it's Chris Hemsworth auditioning for a part. And so it's like, it's huh. neat because it's something, it's not like a silly situation. Like, like Chris Hemsworth working at the bank. It's him doing something he would actually, actually do. Yeah. 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 And it's not him quoting a, a movie. So I haven't, but the one thing that, that I have done that I think he does every once in a while is, um, uh, it's and again, like admittedly, it's it's a bit uh, cliche, um, but I thought that the idea was funny. That it was uh, who's the guy from Taken? Who's the uh, Liam Neeson? Liam Neeson. It's Liam Neeson. It happens to me on podcasts. I forget names that right that are obvious. just normal. <laughs> I'm like his name is Jesus Christ, Ethan. <laughs> in Taken, Jesus. No, Christ no, no, no. Taken? I was just using an example. Oh, okay. I was I was relying on your intelligence no, to fill see... to fill in the punchline for. No, I want to see that movie. That's what Callan told me to do with my joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's if, if uh, <laughs> it's if uh, you can't remember that name, you can remember the twenty word name of my church. Oh yeah, <laughs> the church. It's uh, if Liam Neeson, uh, if he got a call from a like a telemarketer. And then it's going into the taken thing, gotcha. like uh, yeah. I don't know who you are, I don't know what you want, yeah. <laughs> but what you need to know. That's so that's a yeah, that's, that's a, a fun. So I can't technically say I've written for him, but he mm -hmm. hasn't used anything. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I can so say. yeah, written for him. That's the one thing, yeah. I, I wrote episodes of shows where they didn't use anything, and I wrote I wrote the whole script, and then once this, now I watch it on TV, I'm like, oh, they didn't use it, but my my name still pops up. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that works. If you get money in your bank account, yeah, I got the money. <laughs> What'll be great about this is when you finally get to the end of this, you'll be like, uh, welcome to the show, Kellen Erskine. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> is <laughs> finished this bio. <laughs> yeah. Well, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, I don't know, Howie and Frank Caliendo. Oh, yeah. That's the end <laughs> of the brothers. That's the end of the bio. <laughs> of my old That's the end bio of the bio, yeah. And, uh, of your two-year-old bio. Year old bio. <laughs> so what's happened since 2017? Well, I bombed on Jimmy Kimmel. Is that in the... Oh, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel's and I skipped over oh, yeah. it somehow. That's, uh, Tell us about uh, the Jimmy Kimmel bomb. So, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is this your big bomb story? Is this the big bomb? Because I was thinking about taking your... Because we have a subscriber portion with, mm -hmm. where we put juicy stuff. 
Oh. I was thinking you could tell your bomb story and I'll tell my first open mic night story. Great. Let's do that. And so only, we're teasing him? Okay. Yeah. Teasing sure. him. So what do you do right and now? And we're also going to have you read unused headlines with us. Okay, cool. And you can judge them and read them in your in your signature laid back style. <laughs> <laughs> That's your bio. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You want to join us for hate mail? Sure. All right. I'll start writing one right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if people want to find you... Oh, yeah. online and yeah. and, and be able to check stuff out in fact i could probably throw a clip of one of your best uh, little bits on onto our podcast if you want me to yeah that'd be great yeah if you want to become his 3076 <laughs> twitter <laughs> follower what, what clip should i use <laughs> what? conan so the most selfish thing that a human being can possibly do is leave an empty shopping cart in a parking space <laughs> I just hate what that says about people, right? You're telling me you can meander for two and a half miles inside Costco pushing that thing. And then the moment you get to your vehicle, you're like, not another step. <laughs> That's why I don't even care anymore. You guys can try this too. Every time I'm inside a grocery store, I take someone else's cart. <laughs> try it, full of food, take it, it's much faster. <laughs> and you get to try new things. You can do that. It isn't wrong. <laughs> it's not stealing. What could they possibly even say to you? Excuse me. I gathered that. <laughs> you can just say thanks and you can regather. You know the route. That's how I found out that I like hummus. <laughs> you know what else is not stealing? Putting an extra bike lock on a stranger's bike. <laughs> it's pretty crazy that bike locks are legal. Do you have any idea the amount of power you wield with your imagination in a bike lock? There are so many possibilities. You could just walk past the Baskin Robbins and be like, mm, you're closed. <laughs> so arbitrary what we need permission to buy and what we don't. You have to show photo ID in a hobby shop to get paint. Yet all of us are just one Amazon click away from buying orange cones and making traffic go wherever we want. <laughs> I have a landline telephone. I didn't buy it. It just came with a tiny house that I rent in L.A. I was talking to my neighbor in our front yards recently. This guy's nosy. Some of us have that neighbor. This guy's open about it, though. It's uncomfortable. He very casually threw this in, into the dialogue. Hey, Kellen, the other day I picked up part of a conversation from your cordless phone through my baby monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's a real thing that can happen. I didn't know. I also didn't know how to respond to him. He's just smiling like a weirdo. <laughs> so I said, actually, I don't have a cordless phone. Oh, but occasionally I do stand in your baby's room and talk to him. And his special is on Prime. What's it called? Amazon and, Prime. And the special is from two years ago. So I know you love that stuff. <laughs> That's our favorite. That was the peak of Kellen's career two years ago. Is that on? We haven't it really followed on, in the last. It is on Prime. And it's called. Composed. Composed, yes. I had somebody message me online. They're like, when you, uh, where can I see more of your stuff? And I was like, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, but if you don't have Prime, it's like three bucks. And they messaged me back, I don't pay for comedy. What? And I was like, I am sorry. I forgot I'm doing all this for free for everyone. Yeah. I don't pay for comedy. That's great. So, I like that that's one of their core principles in their yeah. life. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what you're going to die on. Yeah. I live my life the way my father raised me, not to pay for comedy. There are enough hilarious things in this life than to have to pay for it. <laughs> Walruses, for example. All right. Uh, you're at Kellen Erskine on Twitter. Is that what, what, what your name? Kellen, I think so. At Kellen Erskine or Kellen. We'll put Erskine it all in the show notes. Those, yeah. If anybody looks at those. And I'm going to be at the Ontario Improv. When does this come out? I'm going to be there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Next I should week. try to go. Oh, I'm going to go. I can yeah, get free yeah. tickets. There. I hope I'm not busy. <laughs> what night? Wait, I wasn't. I wasn't joking. I can get free tickets there. I just. But, we're just making fun of this guy. He won't pay but, for comedy. But I won't pay for it. So and you're like. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great segue. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> My cousin works there. So. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> you want to so, go, Ethan? Me, you, and uh, what's the day? October sixteenth, Wednesday, eight o'clock, oh, and it's I gonna be probably... it's gonna be an all clean show opener. Because you're the like, clean comic. Yeah. October sixteenth. So. <laughs> so can you bring kids? Oh, the other guys are clean too. It's eighteen and up. Yeah, other oh. guys are clean, which doesn't always happen. So yeah, October all right. Sixteenth, Kellen Erskine. Yeah. Whoa, everybody okay? okay um, let's do it. All right, let's jump into our. Uh, did you get all your self plugging out of the way? Just making sure. Yeah, and in Instagram. So, Instagram. He's on Instagram. Yep, I hate Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. You guys are great. <laughs> don't don't pay for Kellen's comedy and don't follow him on Instagram. <laughs> no, follow him all you want if you want to be some Instagram dork. No, I'm on I'm on Instagram too. Oh. Are you ready for hate mail? Should I play the jingle? Yeah. I, I always assume I shouldn't play the jingle, but I'm going to do it anyway. Adam Ford. <laughs> what? Is that funny? Oh, Exorcist? yeah, it's an inside thing. You did? Wow. Yeah, it's a total inside joke. Okay. <laughs> Adam Ford founded the website, and then people that don't like it now. Because they say, know that he sold the website. They email us and say, I miss Adam Ford. Yeah, because <laughs> they think anytime something's bad on the website, they say, I really it's miss Adam Ford. because he's gone. <laughs> It's like they're the original. And then we auto-tuned our voiceover guy <laughs> saying, just saying that and impersonating them. And it doesn't work to auto-tune very well when you're a monotone guy. So there you go. It's really funny when you explain <laughs> the whole, now that you've got all the information, you need to laugh. It's great on a Christian podcast to have a bumper music that sounds like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know who thinks it's funny? Frank Fleming. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, well, just, I'm just using my buttons now. That was well timed. <laughs> so we're actually not doing hate mail, right? We're not. Aren't we doing? Uh, Did we have that one? Don't you guys just call that mail? We're gonna read yeah. the, the Hobby Lobby one. Or <laughs> we're gonna save that one. Clap. We're, we're high fiving him for his good joke. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to tell jokes on here, and Ethan doesn't listen because he's already he's reading something else. I know. I feel bad. I listened to it later. I'm like, oh, Kyle was trying to tell a joke, and I totally stomped all over him. So just I just bombed this entire podcast the whole time, and it's brutal. <laughs> Okay, so you sound uh, like me on Kimmel. <laughs> oh, which we're gonna get to yep. in the subscription portion. So, um, yeah, no, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the the kids. Yeah, and it's not hate mail. Yeah, it's not hate mail. Okay, so uh, Greta, I thought we were gonna read. Okay, Greta Greta Thunberg. Yes, we talked about. The, she rode on a giant boat. Greta Thunberg. Thunberg. She said that. <laughs> what? what where am I going with this? We're staring at each other. So, <laughs> <laughs> we have a broken eye contact for like 20 seconds. So, yeah. yeah so, we, 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 we made, we had some comments about how. Yeah, we talked about this last week. If kids say, how dare you and get mad, then you can't criticize those yeah, kids. Yeah, like if you have a position, you just take so the kid and take, tell them to say, I agree with all these positions. Then therefore, if you criticize, then you're criticizing why are your you, child yeah. and how dare you? Why are you criticizing children? So, we actually got a fan to send us their three-year-old daughter saying, how dare you? Right. Attack the Babylon Bee. So let's listen to this. His name is Jacob, right? This is Jacob's daughter. How dare you attack Babylon Bee? <laughs> so now, wait, wait, do, do you have yours? I got some too. I got my kids to help out. Let's hear this. Um, first, this is Calvin. He's two. He's just learning to talk. He's just got to that point where he doesn't just say one word only. He says like he tries to put them together, but he kind of has like a French thing he adds to words. Here we go. Here? Say, say I'm just a child. I saw you. <laughs> How could you? I see you. <laughs> say, you're horrible. I hold you. You say, you've destroyed. No. <laughs> my childhood. I tell that. My dreams. I see. You've destroyed them. I see. How could you? I guess you. How dare you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. My favorite part of all of that is how you preface it with like he's just learning to put words together, but then listening to it, it's like maybe he hasn't learned how to put words together because when you talk to him, you sound like a three-year-old. <laughs> Can you say how dare you? you? Can you? Say I, don't, how I do dare the you? same thing my, with Mike. <laughs> my favorite thing he did though is he just said how dare you, all alone in this. I dare you. Oh, no, you just taught him to say that. I to dare you. you. I dare you. <laughs> anyway, that, that was all impersonating this. So, I dare you. <laughs> so now if you, um, we just want you to know that if you criticize the Babylon Bee, you're criticizing children. That's right. I dare you. <laughs> 
So uh, we need some emotional music, Ethan. Uh, music where, where, doesn't your new fancy board do this? The only well, I have to have it prepared. I have. Um, <laughs> what's the emotional music? I don't know. Is that why that are count? you why are you attacking the children? <laughs> think of the children. <laughs> Next time you think about criticizing the Babylon Bee. Yes. How dare you? How dare you? The music sounds like I'm shopping in Hobby Lobby. <laughs> This is the ultra call music. This is the softly and tender. <laughs> Enough of that. Very good. <laughs> All right. All right. That's the hate mail. For now. And we I are, think, is that the we're, show? We're signing off. Uh, There's stuff we're supposed to say at the end. I always forget. But I, I always remember because I'm a robot of some kind. So if you want to go to, to, to hear the extended version of our podcast, you can go to babylonb.com slash plans and sign up. At any dollar amount level, and you get the full podcast, which is awesome. And you get to hear a cool story about uh, Kellen bombing. Yeah. And you get to share in the humiliation and laughter. <laughs> so do that. Just like on America's Got Talent. For the rest of you, thanks for hanging out with us. Yes. Good day to you. Hey, I have a forgot I can push a button, and, and here it goes. Oh, wait. No, it's too quiet. <laughs> Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills, Adam Ford for creating their job, the other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers, and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee, reminding you to go forth and speak without thinking.